Let me pull okay. this shit. Wait, what'd you say there? <laughs> All right. All right. Okay. Still waiting for people to jump on into the system here. All right, folks, welcome to the Monday Live podcast. We are currently in the pre-show mode. Uh, if you are watching this after the show, there's going to be show notes down below going over all the topics we're going to be covering in this episode uh, this week. I do have a couple of guests with me. I have uh, here David Osler. David, say hi. G'day, everyone. How are you? Good to see you all. Looking forward and to a all- good chat today. And we also got Photo Miak, who's uh, traveling and also podcasting with us. Photo Miak, say hi. <laughs> yeah, pretty much. <laughs> How you guys doing? Great, Great. actually, mate. It uh, looks like you're traveling somewhere at the moment. <laughs> yeah, you know, I'm on, actually, I'll, I'll, uh, how, how do you flip the camera on this thing? We flip it around so guys can see. We're in Arizona. Is that the, oh. it's the, the, the Phoenix skyline right there? Nice. Yeah. So, anyways, out, out for, in the uh, out in the desert, Arizona's desert, isn't it for us Aussies? Yeah, pretty much. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Let's see who's in the chat right now. Uh, happy Labor Day, everyone. Vtex says there. Uh, let's see. So, what is Labor Day, Danny? I'm just curious for us Aussies. What is it? It's just a celebration of. Um, of laborers, people that work. So oh, okay. typically people who are in like government type work will have usually have the day off. Um, so I, I happen to fall into that category. So um, yeah. for, fortunate to have a day off today. So so who have we got in the chat anyway? Uh, I noticed <laughs> Christmas is saying, uh, yes, please cover the EOS aspects. Well, we're definitely going to go through that in detail today. Yep, definitely on that. What's Chris Barr saying? If anyone, uh, if this new Canon launches for more than fourteen to sixteen hundred dollars, uh, this camera will never sell. Hmm, interesting. Yeah, I'm just I'm curious on the pricing too, and and we'll get into that a little bit later. Um, but I, I definitely am curious as far as the price point. But we only got to wait a couple days. And David, you're already on the fourth of September, right? So you'll find out another day, right? You'll talk. Yeah, I'm gonna find out way before you, so I can put an order in before any of you guys can get it. Yeah, you'll know already ahead of us. Um. <laughs> Shoot. Manny Media Tech says uh, just ordered the twenty four one hundred five for my A seven three. Okay, we're jumping up into uh, new gear already. We'll wait on that a little bit. Just going to see if I can try these different headphones. Hang on. All right. Oh, yeah, that's better. Yep, that's this all right. Is, this is crazy on my side. I'm just going to remain quiet and, and, and wait until I'm spoken to. Speak only when spoken <laughs> to. <laughs> like a little kid in the corner. I'm going to be like, Dan, I'm gonna be like uh, Jason on the last stream. <laughs> yeah, Jason. Jason. Jason stayed quiet through through most of that stream. Um, well, while we're at it, so people know, Photo Miak, what are you up to? I know we talked about it before we started the show, but uh, what's going on right now on your end? Uh, so I'm on a fa- we we're on a family vacation for Labor Day last the last uh, family vacation before my daughter starts school, and then um, I'm in Arizona. I'm traveling from LA to Arizona right now i was in arizona then i drove to la and i'm coming back to arizona and so i'm on my way back to my hotel all right chris oh, yeah, Parr is saying wife, don't my wife my wife reminded me that it's my daughter's birthday and we're, it was for her birthday too i forgot about that <laughs> <laughs> uh and also if you guys don't know a photo me is not the one driving uh so don't worry he'll be good he'll be good <laughs> Unless you are driving, and I, I couldn't tell. No, 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 I'm not driving. <laughs> <laughs> not, this, not this time. I won't say that that hasn't happened before, but not this time. Let's see here. Uh, Chris Chan in the chat saying, what are you guys' thoughts on the Fuji X-T3 rumored specs? 
Uh, David, I haven't had a chance to see that yet. So David or Photomiak, I don't know if you guys have had a chance to check that out yet. Which specs is that for, Danny? The X-T3. Uh, thoughts oh, on the yeah, well, it's, well, I've only sort of seen a brief glimpse about it. It's looking like it's going to be a pretty good camera, actually. Um, I know it's going to be, so they're saying it's going to be 30 frames uh, per second. So it's actually going to beat the A9, um, which is going to be really wait, interesting. Wait, 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 30? 30 frames, 30 per, frames second? per second, yeah. Yeah, that's what oh. I've been hearing. What um, and that, that's, that, I think that was a confirmed rumor. I'm not sure, but they, they were saying 30 frames per second, yeah, minimum. And then obviously it's, it's going to have better focusing, the dual card slots. So it's going to be a pretty tough competitor. I think Sony, that might be why Sony will have to answer that with an A6700 or something like that or an A7000. Wow. I, if that's true, if they're hitting 20 plus FPS on that thing, that's going to, and they've gotten some nice telephoto lenses they've been adding, I think. Um, so, well, their, uh, their lens lineup's always been very good on the Fuji side. Um, yeah. so, you know, they do have a really good lens lineup. I would have looked at them when I went from Nikon actually, but they didn't have full frame. So I, I didn't go down the, that Fuji line cause I did look at it initially, but I really, cause I came from Nikon and I had the D4S, I wanted to go for something that was equivalent. So I went over to the Sony line. Um, but Fuji definitely uh you know are a player i i think they're probably going to have the announcements of photokina now that if sony aren't going to announce anything uh nikon have already done theirs canon have already done the, theirs i think fuji is going to be announced on the sixth or the fifth uh of this month so they may wow. have the announcement of photokina yeah every everything's happening this month uh for the most part um so we're going to find a lot of things in a few days which is going to be very exciting um, let's see. Tag the shooters asking me if I've already pre-ordered the 400 f 2.8. I have not yet. Tag. I have. I'm good right now, man. I really want to though. I noticed Diana said the Fuji XT3 looks sweet. Um. I noticed our friend Ken is blabbing on about it. I mean, he's really pushing that hard. Um, but, you know, it's, it's going to be interesting to see. If it does do 30 frames per second, it's going to be incredible. And, and actually, it'd be a good sports camera because if you're dealing with um, the APS-C mount, that's a really good sports camera, uh, you know, because you get that crop in, which is, which is good as well. Yeah, and I know they've got... They have a, there we go. They have the one, a 50 to 140 f2.8 lens um, for telephoto. That's actually not bad. Um, yeah. And they, I, I know, I shouldn't mention that name, but that name I mentioned a minute ago, Ken was saying yeah. it's going to be cheaper than the X-T2. That's good on, that's good on Fuji. Again, folks, mm. if you've just jumped into the show right now, and there's a lot of you in here. Uh, we are going to start the show in about five minutes, and uh, we'll get started as soon as, as possible and try to jump into the topics. Again, you might be wondering where Jason Bong is right now. He's actually still in Cuba, I think, and has very limited access to Internet. So I've got two guests on the show uh, this evening, David and Photo Miike. So uh, just hang tight. We're going to get this, the show started very, very soon. Just looking at um, some other questions. Most people are just saying hi. Oh, Premier Review said, Danny, your uh, setup looks great now. He's looking very blue there. Very intimate, Danny. <laughs> 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 yes, very. very. <sighs> I'm just trying to, trying to step it up. Um, let's see. Manny is saying, did you order the 24105? I don't know if he was asking me or if he ordered it, but oh. uh, it looks like it's in stock again, and uh, it has. I am interested in it, um, but I'm but I'm okay right now. <laughs> Take the shooter said David Osa is hit with the AirPods. That's because when I had these on, these are the Sony ones. It was sort of freaking me out because I couldn't hear anything around me at all. It was a bit weird. So that noise <laughs> cancellation. Yeah, the noise cancellation. I think you can turn them off, Ike, but yeah, I don't know. I've just got them, so. But the noise cancellation was basically uh, a bit weird because everything just went, you know. 
Let's see here. Um, yeah, Manny's saying he did just recently order the 24105F4. Yeah, I'm just glad that thing's back in stock. It's been that thing's been out for a while. Uh, let's see here. <laughs> Jay Sand says hashtag Jason Vong's testing the new Canon camera. <laughs> <laughs> Oh boy. Um Jason Clay hashtag said, <laughs> What was that one? Clear main says seventy to two hundred or one hundred to four hundred. Um uh, well it what do you what shoot? shoot, doesn't it? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. yeah. I think the seventy to two hundred two point eight is more versatile. Um because you can always do the teleconverter if you're talking about Sony. Yeah. You won't get the 400 reach, but you can you can still play around with that 2.8 in, in more environments. Have you found that um, teleconverter? Does it focus still really good with it? Up to the 1.4x. With the 1.4x, the teleconverter, the autofocus is still pretty good. Once you go with the 2x, it slows down a little bit, uh, a little bit more. Okay. Um, and image quality obviously de degrades with that 2x. You're gonna have to stop down quite a bit more than you normally would already. So. You're at what five point six on the seventy two hundred. You're probably gonna have to stop down to like f eight, even f eleven to get um, the images to be sharp. What about that one point four? How much is that? The uh, that the, converter. The, pri the price? Yeah, uh, I think it's around three to four hundred. Okay. Yeah, it's not cheap, um, especially for you out there. It's gonna be a little bit more. Yeah, it'd be probably six hundred dollars for me out here. <laughs> Ridiculous. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, Tag the Shooter says they pushed my 400 2.8 back one week into a, a week into October. He says he's missing football. <laughs> oh man, I'm sorry about that tag. Oh man, Let's see I have here. used that 100 to 400, and I really did like it. Uh, yeah. I, I used that in a shoot, and I actually loved it. <clears throat> it's a handy. It's a handy lens. It's a uh, very versatile, especially in good lighting. Uh, I mean, it still works in lower light conditions, but you're definitely pushing it. You're definitely so. If you use it. that, that's f four, isn't it? It's a four to five point five point uh, six. Five. Yeah. yeah. Have you used that indoors um, with, say, the A nine? How have you found it if you're shooting something like that indoors? It's really good. The A 9s autofocusing is very, very good compared to the A seven R three, for example. Especially in lower light conditions, the A9 will be much more uh, effective in autofocusing. So, yeah. Yeah, that's the thing. Just push the ISO a little bit more, I suppose. Yeah. Yeah. <clears throat> All right. Um, Ach Achu CKR is asking switching over to Sony from Canon for video, shall I wait for the A7S3 or not? Um, you know, we are going to see an, an official announcement in a couple of days. So, from Canon. And then Sony, we probably won't hear maybe until the end of September, early October. I don't know if you can wait that long. Yeah, it depends if you need it. If you need it now, I'd get the A7 III. Um, if you don't need it right now, wait. Um, but the, look, the, A7S, the A7 III video is incredible. Um, it's really underrated. We were just talking about that before you guys came online about how well that works. If you check, check Max Europe's video about that, it's basically up with the A7 II for most things. So um, I'd probably get the A7 III unless you're desperate. Uh, if you're desperate, I mean, to get it now, get that. Otherwise, wait for the A7S III announcement. But there's no, we don't know when that's going to be. Yeah. And it looks like it might even be delayed as far as announcements are concerned. So I'm a little bit yeah. worried. <laughs> we, we might well, not yeah. see. Even, even with that, like if you, got, if you went and brought an A7 III, you could probably still sell it for a good amount of money since they're in so so high demand and upgrade to the A seven S three when that drops. Yeah, oh. true. Yeah, that's a good point. You might it's just think of it as a longer long rental. That's the way I would look at it, right? I mean Yeah, basically, yeah. Yeah. Just think of it as a long rental if you really need it now. That's a good point. Folks, it is uh, seven PM Pacific Standard Time here. We are getting started with Monday Live. Thank you for joining us this evening. Um, just again, to give you a heads up, if you're just jumping in right now or after the show, the show notes will be posted down below. And this evening, obviously, Jason Vong's not with us. He is still in Cuba with very limited internet access. And so I've got two guest hosts with me to hold it down. We've got David Osler. David, can you please say hi? G'day, guys. How are you all going? Uh, 
pleasure to be back on here again to chat to all of you guys. Really looking forward to uh, today's chat. I really admire both these two guys, so it's going to be a lot of fun, I think. <laughs> and we've also got Photo Miike in the house as he's traveling. Yeah, man, I'm trying to stay towards the light because it's getting dark out here, so I need to get to the hotel room because uh, it's just going to be a black. It's just going to look like witness <laughs> protection pretty soon. <laughs> just, it's going to be a black shadow with a guy talking. <laughs> oh, man. All right. So, as you know, we usually start off with our hashtag New Gear segment. We'll try to speed through a little bit quicker this time around so we can get to the canon stuff because I know people are very interested in our discussion on that. But let us know in the comments down below if you picked up any new gear recently, this week or last week. Uh, again, hashtag New Gear. We're going to be on that segment. Um, hopefully, Jason Vong is not in Guantanamo, as Jason is saying right there. Um, but, yeah, let us know if you picked up any new gear david we're gonna go and start off with you um is there anything you've picked up recently in the last week or two oh yeah the, look the only thing i got and i love this this i got the new adapter for the rx 100 you know the new little um mount that you can sit it on it i, I had it on pre-order for ages and it just came <laughs> the other day i love this little thing it's fantastic I mean, it's oh, wow. you, you can you can shoot the photos from it. You can shoot your video from it. It just connects with that USB through there, um, and it just sits beautifully on the table and great for doing your selfies because you can sit it on a table and point it back towards you. Um, but I love it. It wasn't cheap. I mean, I think it was around one hundred and forty dollars <laughs> Australian, oh, but it is tiny, and I really do like it. It's 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 great actually. So I'm looking forward to having a bit of a play with it. I only got it. Uh, late yesterday, so I haven't really used it yet at this stage, um, but seems to work really well. Uh, but yeah, but that's really the only thing that I've bought in hardware. Um, I'm still looking at things sort of in the future, but we'll talk about that once that happens. But yeah, I'm happy with that at this stage anyway. Is that the the Mark V you got there, David? Yes, that's Mark V. I I went with the funny thing was I bought this just as the six was released the day after the six <laughs> was released. I could have taken it back. But I decided to keep it mostly because of the 1.8 aperture, the internal ND mm -hmm. uh, with the things that mattered to me. I love shooting it in low light conditions. So the zoom didn't matter that much to me. I was more interested in getting that, um, the ND, the internal ND and the um, 1.8. Also the apps too. I love the time-lapse apps because if I'm going to use this for travel, I love being able to have the time-lapse built into this. So that was another reason why I kept this one as well. I did have that thing where I could take it back, but I decided to keep that. And I did a video about it recently, and uh, the results really surprised me how well it actually went on a trip in video stills and also time lapse. It it worked great. Awesome. Um, yeah, I, you know, I picked up the older version of that little hand grip. Uh, it, it, it almost had the same exact features. So. Uh, uh, I was just curious as far as like the minor differences between the older version of that little pistol grip and the new one. Yeah, I wonder what the difference is. Does it have Did the it? zoom and the photo and the movie button built into yeah. that? It has. Oh, it has the same features. It's just I think this is a rebadging and remarketing of it. Yeah, um, it probably is, and probably charge you more money. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they did. I, I think I got mine cheaper because it was already uh, it's a bit older. Uh, let's see here. Speaking about your RX100 Mark V, I picked this up for the RX100 Mark V. It's a little um, small rig oh, nice. case for it. So, um, and is that the five as well? This is also the five as well. I, yeah. um, I my initial plan was I picked this up because I was testing out the RX100 Mark VI. I had done a loaner from Pro Support. But I checked online and realized after that the actual this this thing doesn't actually fit on the RX100 Mark VI, and so you can't because I wanted to be able to record off the screen on the RX100 Mark V, uh, R, the Mark VI, and do a review on it. Um, yeah. But that I, I couldn't mount like a video recorder or something on it, so that didn't fly well with it. So I ended up just keeping this for the Mark V because I. <laughs> I remember that one time I dropped it. So, I mean, I guess this will protect it a little bit more in case that happens again. And it's kind of nice. I, I like the form factor it has. gives you a little bit better grip with it. So, um, we'll see how it goes with it uh, as far as this Yeah, I, I got that small little pinky grip. I don't know what you call them on the side there. It's the Sony one. It just gives you a little bit more grip. Have you got that on that one? Oh, uh, no, I don't. I don't. And It I makes think a it, difference it, holding it. Okay. <clears throat> Maybe we'll consider that. 
Yeah, I don't um, know. It's not, it's quite cheap. It's not. I think it was only twenty dollars or something like that, and it's it just comes with adhesive tape on either side, and um and just sits on. But you can sort of see it there if you look. Um, it just gives it that little bit that you can grip onto, um, which makes it feel a little bit nicer in your hand if it's you know if you're holding it just basically raw or or bare. Um, and it looks like it it fits really well on the camera. You'd think it had came with it actually. It, they really should have included it, considering they should, the price. Yeah, they should. Yeah. <laughs> considering the price. And then uh, another thing that I have here is the Sigma One Thirty Five uh, FE for oh, nice. And I, it's a rental, so I rented it from Lens Rental, and I'm doing some tests with it, shooting with it so far. What I've noticed is that the A Nine definitely drives this lens much faster. Uh, when I was using with the A7R3 for a little bit, it was struggling more so. It was it was very strange. So definitely need to shoot with it more. I, it with the A9 shooting with the A9, it does work exceptionally well. Image quality is very good. Um, but is it nice and sharp? I, yeah, very nice. Yeah, very nice <clears throat> and sharp. Focus is pretty good. I I would say it's it's pretty good. Um, what about so tracking? I shot some sport. Tracking is good too. I shot some sports. I had a football player run across the field and it, it actually tracked the subject and missed out of like maybe the 12 or so 13 frames, only one frame was out of focus. And then it picked oh, it that's, up. That's good. Yeah. So, mm. but that's what the A9 though. So I, yeah. it wasn't being tested on the A7 III. Uh, A9 just, again, the autofocus is, is really good with it. So, um, but I will try and test it out tomorrow, hopefully with some volleyball. Um, I don't think people device. still understand the differences that the, the A9, even in my testing, is definitely better than the A7 III. You, you notice it when you use both cameras. It, it's just got that little bit of finesse and difference in, in the yeah. way that it works. You know, it's just that bit quicker, and, and you do notice it. Yeah. Like I said, before, like what I would say before, the shutter almost feels a little bit heavier on the A7 R3, like when I was using that. But the A9, is just it just snaps. Just a little yeah. bit of... Uh, just a little bit, it just goes already. And that's what I really like about the A9 for sports, especially. Uh, let's see here. Okay. I think that's it for me as far as, and I think photo makes still kind of getting set up. So let's go ahead and jump into the chat. Um, unless, <laughs> yeah, he's still moving into the hotel room. Uh, let's go ahead and check the <laughs> chat and see what new gear people have recently picked up. And David Oster, just jump out if you see, see anything that pops up. Yeah, I'm just going back. Um, AEW said uh, Sony A7 III and the 16 to 35 G Master and the 85 1.8. That's a lovely combination. Yep, that is a very good combo. <laughs> <laughs> Mike Homer, new gear, Peak Design Clutch. What? What is that? I'm not quite sure. Is that just like a smaller bag? No, I don't bag? know. Yeah, it must be a bag, I think. Yeah. Um, Alan said the Sony 16 to 35 f4 lens. I've got that lens and I love it. Um, yep. I really do like that lens. It's it's amazing value if you don't want to pay for the GM lens. Yeah, I used that to shoot some uh, some some shots for football the other night on Friday, and I, I really liked it. Came out really good. Let's see here, Joshua Morell, new gear, Think Tank Perception Bag. Nice. Um, New Gear picked up the Sony 90mm macro. Uh, it's still probably one of the sharpest lenses that yeah. Sony have. Um, it's a really good lens. Yeah, <clears throat> that's a, yeah, it's definitely a good lens. D Dion Chapman, New Gear Godox 8200, Sony trigger, color filters for the 200, reflector and honeycomb filter. Nice. Good day, Dion, too. He's another fel uh, fellow Melbourneite like me. <laughs> okay. <clears throat> um, Sony FE50. Uh, Ashley has has got nice. I've never used that lens. Have you used the fifty one point four? Not the Zeiss. No, no. Um, no, I did test it out. I did. I did. I did test it out. It is a very sharp lens. Um, if you were going to decide between the fifty five f one point eight Zeiss versus the fifty in terms of sharpness, the Zeiss fifty fe, the one that I tested was sharper than this. The fifty five. I would pick the fifty Zeiss. Yeah, 1.4. Uh, let's see here. Jay San, New Gear, Rokinon 35 2.8 on sale at B&H and the Peak Design Capture Clip. Good stuff there. I, I, I have the I have the Rokinon 35 2.8. I like that lens. It's a good uh, 
inexpensive lens that's to go on, with. That's on special, I think, at the moment, isn't it? Though it was the other day. They had $100 off, actually. I saw that the other day. Um, I think it's back to normal now, but... <clears throat> C stand, I love my C stands. I've got a, I've got a few actually in my studio right behind me. Um, I've got a lot of uh, three of those C stands that I use all the time. It's certainly the most stable stand that you can use. The photographer, new gear, Sony sixteen to thirty five f two point eight GM, Sony thirty five millimeter f one point four. The DJI Ronin S, and the photographer is now one hundred percent Sony. Just to let you know, I don't. Uh, did you end up selling all your stuff already, photographer? I know you're on the. You're trying to get ready to sell off some of your Canon stuff. I don't know if you've uh, gotten that all done yet. See that you. Rowan's massive. Oh, I saw that yesterday. I went to VidCon uh, on Saturday and Sunday here, and I was, that's the first one I've seen, actually. Uh, but, boy, it's a big gimbal. Oh, wow. They have a they have a VidCon over there at your your neck of the woods. That's pretty cool. Yeah, yeah. It's uh, I went Saturday and Sunday. It was um, good actually. I learned some interesting things. So it was quite a good uh, weekend. I, it's the second year, so I think I think it's they've got it for five years coming to Melbourne. Um, so I'll go again next year. Got it. Let's see here. Anything else? RL, new gear, the Bodice 25 F2. Nice. I haven't used those lenses, but I've only heard good things about those. Um, <laughs> NBD Visual says new gear, not necessarily gear, but got my APSC is not dead t shirt. <laughs> <laughs> NBD Visuals, thank you. There, there was only four people that picked it up. So you're one of the four that picked it up. So thanks, man. I appreciate that. You should, you should tag the shirt. Uh, Jarrell A, new gear, Fujifilm X100F as a daily carry around still shooter. Nice. Let's see. Uh, a few people saying APS-C rules. <laughs> <laughs> hey, we won't we won't even talk about it today because I'm excited mm. about the potential A7000 still. I mean, I'm I'm still on that. So Brian said um, 35 mil 1.4. Um, e mount, nice, very nice lens. Small focus Dr SDI. I notice is that the new version of small focus that's just come out? I notice there's they've just got a new version than the one we've got, Danny. I, I'm guessing it is. <laughs> I, I'm, I'm guessing that one is a new version. Let's see here. Uh, Dre 100 new gear peak design capture v3 and uh, nice. I haven't upgraded yet to that one. I still have my Mark II version, version two. Let's see. Oh, a lovely donation from RL. Thank you so much. That comes directly to Osla Images down in <laughs> Melbourne. Thank you very much. <laughs> <laughs> All right, thank you for the five dollars. <laughs> Uh, let's see. Manny Media is asking, hey, Danny, what do you think about the Sigma R20 millimeter for YouTube videos? I don't know, but um, if I ever have a chance, I'll put on a rental option so I can check it out. But I think it it would. By the way, I'm just letting you know, I'm using the 18 to 35 Sigma, the one that everyone uses for like YouTube stuff. So I have it on my A7 III, the 18 to, 18 to 35 F1.8. So I'm just using it in crop mode. I'm, I'm just using an A6500 and a um, the 24 1.8 uh, is the lens that I'm actually using. Yeah, and I'm using a iPad Air 2. <laughs> <laughs> it's pretty, pretty Photo Folks, if I can gets... do it, you can do it too, okay? <laughs> Source of inspiration right here. He's back in the house. Photo me, Ike, what have you recently picked up or uh, can share with us? Um, nothing, actually. Nothing. I actually, you know what? So this is what I've been looking on the fence about is the Godox uh, SL60, which is the LED light, which is, I guess, the closest thing would be the aperture. But the aperture is like 700 bucks, and the Godox version is like $130. And it's basically the same amount of light. It's just the aperture is a little bit smaller. Um, and I think it has a battery pack that it comes with, if I'm not, if I'm not mistaken. Whereas the Gordax version is just like a standard LED light that plugs into the wall. Um, but uh, I don't know if you know, uh, Kedron had put me onto it because he had the Gordax, the, the 130, which I think is 130 watt mm -hmm. light. And uh, it's super bright. And he had it on a cheetah stand with the 26 inch 
softbox and the light was beautiful. Are they spotlights, like, Ike? Are they spotlights or are they the panels? It's no, it's just a, it's a spotlight. Like it's, it's essentially like an LED light. Like okay. like imagine the, the Godox <laughs> eighty four hundred if it was yeah. just an LED light. Like that's that's okay. all it is. It's just an LED light, and you can it's S mount, so you can mount adapters to it. So I was like, well, man, like everybody's like aperture this and aperture that, and I was like, well, I might as well get this because this like a third of the a fourth of the cost of the aperture, and it's just as bright. You know? So that's cool. what I'm cons- I'm like I'm on the fence about getting that because I'm like I might wait. Um, until next month to buy it, I might buy it this month because you know the new iPhone's coming out. So <clears throat> that is true. The new iPhone's coming out very soon. Yeah. So that that might be the next new gears uh, <laughs> iPhone X pre-order. Let's see here. Manny Media Tech are you using the lens with the MC11. Yes, I am. And Tag the Shooters saying that the uh, A7 III is supposed to be my brother's. That is correct. I just let him borrow an A7R2. So he's still using that. <laughs> uh, well, I use a seven three. He's probably watching this right now, and he just heard that. So, hey, what's up, man? <laughs> All right, I think that's it. Uh, I think we're gonna just jump into this already, so people we can get started on that. So, the main topic of this evening is gonna be the Canon EOS R. Obviously, we're gonna make some comparisons to Sony mirrorless, and uh, also even the uh, Nikon Z camera as well from our resident expert. So uh, we'll get some uh, some ideas going there. And I'm going to go ahead and just get started with uh, some questions to get the ball rolling uh, as far as David's thoughts on it and even Photo Miag's thoughts on the actual camera. Um, the official release, the release date of the information, they're going to have an announcement September 5th. So the stuff that we're talking about now can still potentially change. Maybe there's two cameras, who knows? But uh, there was a PDF leaked uh, and that was posted on several of the rumor sites already uh, detailing some of the specifications and also the lens information. So a lot of it's already out there available to the public. Uh, it's just that we could still hear some uh, other things during the announcement, but hopefully they surprise us still with something else. So David, uh, I'm gonna start with you. Um, you've had some time to think about this obviously with the specifications for the Canon. What is, um, who do you think uh, this camera is for, uh, David? Okay. Um, now, I'm going to start with this first, Danny, because... Uh... <sighs> now, I just want to blow this, because this is the party that Sony are actually having at the moment um, after the announcement of the Canon and the Nikon uh, camera. So this, this is probably party hats, streamers, Champagne going off everywhere. Um, <laughs> I'll get back to being serious because I did post a video about both of those uh, cameras just recently, the Nikon uh, release and also the Canon release, and I got slammed a little bit yesterday because I wanted to give Canon the benefit of the doubt because, and I'll explain why, um, Nikon obviously showed their hand and they basically gave both versions of their cameras that they released straight away. The Canon version, uh, they've only announced one. And I'm, I thought, mm. and I made a video about this yesterday, that I believe because of the lenses that have been announced with that camera, which those lenses are actually exceptional. If you're dealing with something like a 50, 1.2, and a, a, what was it, 28 to 70 F2 yep. zoom lens, I don't believe there's any way that they're going to link those lenses with just that camera because it doesn't make sense. Those lenses are not going to be cheap. They're going oh, to be no. quite expensive yeah. uh, being around there. So I can't see them uh, leaving those lenses for that announcement. So I think we may have jumped the gun a little bit, and I think Canon may fairly soon announce a second camera to this. But but let's talk about the camera that's announced anyway. I, I think it's probably overall that this announcement, I think, is worse than the Nikon announcement. I think the, the Z or Z cameras, whichever way you want to say it, have definitely got better specs than what the Canon ha has been announced. They're both lacking dual SD cards, which I think is a real bummer. Um, but it's it's a little bit disappointing that the crazy autofocus, we still have to see what that means where they're talking about 5,000, whatever it is, uh, AF points. I'm not quite certain how that figure uh, comes about um, and whether the camera is really going to be crippled. But I, I think the thing is, I really believe they've both missed the boat. Nikon and Canon both have with these cameras because if they brought out a good release right from the start, they would have just sold bucket loads of these 
cameras, and I think they have protected their digital SLR line more than what I think they should have. It's either that or perhaps it's a lot harder to make something like what Sony have now produced than what we all believe it is. It may be really hard to add IBIS. The Canon is lacking IBIS, but it has a flip-out screen. That These are things that just sort of don't make sense to me a little bit. I, I actually thought I might buy that Canon because I thought it was amazing having a flip-out screen. But the second I heard there's no IBIS on board, it's sort of not useful for me uh, for vlogging. And that's what I thought that I'd buy that uh, camera for. But I think with, I'm still waiting. I still think Canon are probably going to drop something that's much better to justify the cost of those yeah. um, amazing lenses that they've announced. Yeah, we got to definitely, I still think we got to give it a chance um, for the announcement on the 5th and get the whole, the full story. I mean, we can, we have partial, like most of the, the whole picture so far, but there could be still something there uh, with regards to their announcement. Um, photo me, I, are you ready? Can, uh, what are your thoughts yeah, yeah, yeah. on the, uh, the, the EOS R and uh, your take on the camera, everything you've heard so far as far as specs and information? Whoa. When I saw the body itself, I was like, oh, wow. Like, I saw that little scroll thing, and I saw a flip-out screen. And I was like, dang, Canon did it. Like, they did everything that everybody asked for. But then when I saw the specs, I was like, yikes, only one card slot. But, like, what this may be, uh, which I've never heard anybody mention, is this may be, like, the new and improved mirrorless version of the 6D2. Because you got to remember, like, Canon has the... Um, 6D line, and then it goes straight from the 6D to the 5D Mark IV as yep. their like mirrorless lineup goes. So this may be like the equivalent to like the mirrorless version of the 6D two, which if if it's comparable to that, if that's where they're positioning this camera, it's a win. Like it's a win all the way around because it's way better than the 62, in my opinion, spec wise, because it has 4K and uh, all of that stuff, flip around screen, and then uh, it's mirrorless, so it's lighter, and we can go on. If it's supposed to be like an equivalent to a 5D Mark IV, then like David said, it's a fail. So I think it, and I think that depends on the price because that also kind of we don't know the price. Like we knew what the yeah. what the um, Nikon was going to be because the rumors were coming out that it was going to be priced around you know 2,000 to, to 4,200 so or 3,400. So I think the price will really determine where they're going to position this camera. Because um, again, like for a lot, if it's if it's 2,000 or under. It's like one of gonna be it's gonna be one of the perfect YouTube cameras. Uh, but if it's higher, if it's if it's priced higher, then I you know, I can't you know, I don't know. Yeah, you know, talking about what this camera uh is, you know, and I had a chance to think about it a little bit more, it really seems to be it's as if we took the six D Mark II, the five D mm -hmm. Mark IV, and the EOS M fifty, and they all came together. Um the EOS M fifty being their APSC mirrorless camera which has some resemblance to what this is. Uh, you took the best, you know, some things of all of those. Obviously, you don't have the dual card slots on the 5D Mark IV, but you are getting the 4K capabilities you didn't get from the 6D Mark II. Mm -hmm. So um, I think there's a lot of good things with this camera. And my, my stance on this right now is I think this camera is... I don't think that we don't see everything yet. We don't know everything. There could be another camera, which they have rumored that there's another camera on the corner that people might be asking for. And if this is their $2,000 camera, for example, what could their $3,000, if this is the case, right? If this is their $2,000 camera, what's going to be their $3,000 or $3,300 camera going to look like? And whether or not that's what people are kind of itching for with more uh, you know, additional features that this one doesn't have. Well, but, I think... Um, yeah. I think that's what the, the confusing part is, is because um, this camera may be the cheaper version, but there aren't any, it doesn't seem like that they're releasing any cheaper version lenses for it. Like, I think they announced the 24 to 105, which that's cool, but uh, the 51 to and the 28 to 70 are going to be hugely expensive lenses. So if you're trying to come up with a 60 like camera um, with, 1D Mark II lenses, then that's it's going to be it's going to create a confusion because like oh I'm going to buy this camera now I have to buy adapters so I think it's going to it's going to put in a tough a tough spot yeah. at least with yeah, Nikon that's... they they came out with some lenses that even those lenses are a little bit more expensive it like the Nikon 50 will be nowhere near you know Canon's 51 II in price you know yeah so I mean still, they're still 
They've still updated the, I mean, they, look, at least they fixed the codec on the Canon. That they've gone away from that stupid MPEG, whatever it was that they were using, and uh, and now they've gone to H.264, I think. So they've definitely in, improved the codec on that camera. I, I think the main, but then they've left log out of that camera, which is interesting for videographers as well, which is a bit of a, a silly decision, I think. Uh, you know, it's, it's really interesting. The things that they put in seem to be good, but then they take things out. I, I think Canon have basically put everything in their basket on this with the autofocus. That's clearly what they're trying to aim at with this camera, having that uh, articulating screen, having that 5,000 whatever it is uh, focus points and having that dual pixel AF um, is probably what they're really pushing this camera with. But then they haven't got the 10 bit like the Nikon have, the 422 out. Um, so the, there's things there. Nikon have got log, but then you've got to add a, an external monitor to put you know, to get the log out. Um, so there's sort of give and takes in all of these releases, really. It, it, it Nothing's competing with Sony yet. It's honestly very, the one, the one I see this is like, it's the same thing that Canon does every single time. They give you something, but they don't give you everything. And it just keeps on, the cycle just keeps on continuing. I'll be, I, I didn't see, I didn't think they were going to get C-Log in this system only because Canon does a really good job of segmenting their cinema line as well as their consumer, prosumer line, their photography equipment. And so they never really blend those two too closely. They want to keep all their cinema stuff intact. And I, if I imagine, ima it, it, imagine there was 4K 60p um, mirrorless camera with C-Log with really great dual pixel autofocus technology, what would happen to something like a C200, for example, uh, in that kind of case? Now, granted, there's there are two di two differently complete two different systems, and people get a C200 for a particular reason for all the benefits it has as a cinema camera, but I don't imagine them doing that in this particular model unless there's a, like another model that exists that's priced higher that's going to have more of those features in there. The other so. thing too is the bottom line. I mean, you might say yes, they're going to protect their higher end models, but if they sell twenty, thirty of these mirrorless cameras to one C200. You'd think the bottom line would be that they want to sell. They'd still make more profit by selling way more mirrorless cameras than what they would with, a, say, a C200. And I think it's a little bit of silly thinking that, you know, to protect this unbelievably expensive line against something where they can sell bucket loads, uh, you know, is, is strange thinking. And, it, you know, and it's like just putting in one card. I know we have massive discussions about one card, and that did save me because I did have a corrupted card when I was shooting uh, recently and it was a dance shoot that I couldn't reshoot and I would have hated to tell the client that, you know, I couldn't deliver their images and thank God I was using the A9 and it had a backup card because that raw card corrupted. And it reminded me too that not when my first trip to the USA, uh, I actually um, obviously flew there, but as I was flying, I looked out the window and I saw an engine that the actual engine blew up and um, it actually flames came flying out and everything else. And the pilot came out with a light looking through, looking at the engine. I thought, <laughs> oh, my God, I was going to die. This is the end of it. And I thought to myself, oh, he wow. said to me, the exact <laughs> comment to me was, don't worry, David, we've got two engines. We can fly on one engine. Now, what if that only had one engine? I would have been dead. I mean, that's a little extreme, though, but you can compare memory card to a plane. <laughs> but what I'm saying is they have a backup. It's like a backup bike where I'm saying yeah, it's, no, I know. you yeah, know, I know it's, yeah, it, it's, <laughs> oh, I just thank God that I had that backup when I had that job that actually <laughs> failed. And I, I don't ever want to say to a client again that I can't deliver your images because, you know what, that client, if I miss wedding images because a card mm -hmm. corrupted or, or that dance, which was a lot of money, that was worth a lot of money to me. If I'd had to say to the client, I can't give you those images because my car corrupted, that client's not going to give a hoot. They won't care that my camera corrupted. All they're going to care about is that they haven't got their images. I wouldn't be recommended again. They probably wouldn't use me again. So as a professional, I'm never, ever going to shoot again with one camera, with a one card slot because of that issue that happened to me. So to me, it's important. Now, it might not be to someone else, but I'm never going to let a client down by only having one card. No, no, I, I agree. I like, you know, I made my video about the Nikon Z7 and, you know, my argument was, you know, based on like, like, for example, this trip is actually a perfect example. Like I brought my Nikon D750 with me on my family trip to Arizona and I'm here at the, uh, 
at the hotel in the pool. And I actually did like a little mini photo shoot. Like I have to, but I've only I only used one card on my D750. I don't I don't need like the redundancy because these images aren't that important. So these aren't client. These are just images for me. So I'm not worried about redundancy and backup. And it would just be more than I would be willing to deal with anyway. But in this particular case, like for example, my Panasonic G85, which only has one memory card, would be perfectly fine for this particular you know case scenario where it's like, oh, I'm on a trip. I brought my camera and I just want to take pictures of the city or around, and I want something smaller that I can pack up that I can still use my Nikon lenses because I'm a Nikon shooter professionally, if I can, you know, make my kit a little bit smaller for vacation and still have the optimal image quality, that's perfect. But like, like you said, like, I wouldn't recommend like, oh, go shoot a wedding with my memory card. Like, I wouldn't, I wouldn't say it. I'd say, you know, if you're going to do it, you know, you're going to do it with risk because people, people do do it and they, you know, obviously get out just fine, but that's not what I'm promoting per se. Yeah, it's like playing Russian roulette almost. See, th this is the thing. I know people, I, and I, I was totally honest about this, that I said all along that I used to back Sony when uh, the original cameras came out because they had one card slot because I'd never had a card that corrupted. And I used to back Sony by saying, oh, I've never had an issue or I don't. And I use this, like I actually use that to back up uh, during the shoot because I, I sort of would make because i was a little bit paranoid coming from a d4s which had two cards but yeah. i used to back up with this during the day um but the problem was what happened to me was the car corrupted and it looked fine on the back of the camera like it didn't look like there was anything wrong but when i went into lightroom the the images were totally unusable by having corruptions coming right across all the images and i was only saved by having that second sd card slot that's there. The other thing too you've got to consider too is sometimes the cards break inside, sometimes the actual uh, attachment breaks in the camera, uh, and they're all things too that that you know that that you've just got to be wary of. I noticed a number of people are asking about that plane flight. I'll tell you, it was United Airlines. Oh, we were no. nearly, <laughs> we were halfway between, we were halfway between uh, Australia and Hawaii because we hadn't reached the halfway point. We had to turn back. That was the most scary flight I've ever been on in my life. It was just. Unbelievable. Yeah, I would. I would be. Yeah, uh, please God, <laughs> please God. Yeah. <laughs> I'm glad we can make light of a very serious situation, David. Glad you're all right. <laughs> <laughs> it's like a lesson. Remember? Let me tell you about two car slides. I almost died once. The lesson. <laughs> hey, wait, what? <laughs> What does that got to do with oh my that God. photo shoot? All right. <laughs> you know what's funny, too? I actually had a card corruption on my A9 uh, when I was shooting football on Friday. Uh, but it wasn't the camera's fault necessarily. I was I was testing out this third-party battery grip because people were interested in it. So I was doing some tests. And so I had my two batteries inside of this third-party battery grip. And it still had charge on there. And all mm -hmm. of a sudden, the camera just died. It, it just died completely. One battery was still full. It never switched over correctly. And then when I turned back the camera on, it was trying to rebuild the files. And it was never, it was never able to rebuild everything. Now, it didn't corrupt everything. It only corrupted a certain segment of photos that I was shooting at that time frame. But, yeah, it's just talking about cards and issues and all that stuff. But Yeah, it just, anyway. it just changed my thinking. Like, I, honestly, I used to protect Sony so much on that. And I, I just thought after that, it changed my whole thinking to think I've got to think of the clients first and it's just never going to happen again because it's in my contract that I'm protected but it still doesn't yeah. uh, protect your word of mouth or your reputation you know this is the yeah. thing that you have to consider and some people are saying they're using dual cards to go overflow and really that's crazy if you're doing that because you really should be backing those cards up rather than having it as overflow it, it's you just it's like I said it's like playing Russian roulette which is why I'm going to put this in that. I'm going to put this disclaimer <laughs> out there for you people who are still shooting with one card slide anyway. Have at least two cameras. It's if your camera only has one slot card slide. Okay, that sucks. But if you only got one card slide and one camera, now you're really now you're really talking. Because like I know some people who do dual cameras, so they'll you know they'll get you know one section with one camera and they'll get a different angle with a, you know with a lens on a different camera, and then um, at least if one card fails. You didn't miss the entire event. You might miss a few shots, but you have coverage because you had dual cameras. But if you're shooting one camera with one card, no, you know, 
Yeah, yeah. I, think we, I think we can all agree that the dual card slot <laughs> has its purpose, and, and especially for event style type work, and you have clients to deal with, especially weddings. Mm -hmm. That it's going to come in play. I, I don't think we we have any arguments on that. Um, but speaking about the Canon camera that we have right now with the single card slot, obviously they're going to obviously not be focusing on that particular segment of market. I would assume, right? They they don't have a dual card slot option on that Canon EOS R, so that would. So who is this camera really for? People that don't need the dual card slot, that might be Canon base, but um, who else might be interested in this? Are Sony people going to go back to Canon or um, what do you guys think? What's your thoughts well, on I that? Just, I just wonder too, like they must have seen how much Sony got bagged though about uh, this initially. Do you, I mean, do you remember the caning that we all got when the A7 II came out and everything else that there was, everyone was bagging us like crazy about dual card slots. And then the first two cameras that come out from Nikon and Canon don't have them. Oh, yeah. I just can't believe they weren't watching what was going on, you know, and, and thinking, oh, geez, they cop such a caning here. We, we better make sure we don't do that to our cameras. Well, I think, I think it depends <clears throat> on the marketing. Like you have to look at the marketing of these cameras because like, if Canon is marketing this camera as a camera for professionals, for, you know, all kinds of jobs. Like, if you go on the site, you see a wedding image, and they show the, you know, five EOS R, and it's like yeah. a wedding photographer. Show, then that's kind of like, all right, you're advertising into wedding. That's, that's obviously yeah. what you think of wedding professionals. And you have to also look at Nikon's marketing. Like, I didn't, I didn't pay attention to Nikon's marketing closely mm -hmm. to see what images they showed. You know, I showed, they showed, like, some editorial stuff. Which is all fine. I haven't seen any like event work, or I haven't seen them, you know, show wedding photographers saying, "Oh, I can take this to a wedding and shoot it." Like, so it, it's it's all in marketing because, to, in to Sony's defense, I'm not sure how they marketed the A7R2 um, or the A7 II. You know, the A9 was clearly marketed as a sports camera, and that was the first camera with dual car slots, and it had a ton of other features that, you know, put Sony in position. Uh, to play with the big boys. But before that, like all the other cameras, like you said, David, were kind of looked at as a joke in a, in a hardcore professional market. But with the A9, that solidified them. And, yeah. you know, they had that body. And so, you know, we, we use the same body for the rest of these cameras. And we just throw these features into everything. So, <laughs> oh. again, it's the A7 III that really, it's that line. The A7 III kind of cross that line because if they would have put two car slots in the A9 and the A7R3 and put one car slot in the A7 III, we'd, we'd still say, okay, if you want professional cameras, you got the R3 and the A9. Yeah. If you want consuming, you have the A7 III. But by them putting two in the A7 III, it blurred that line. Like Sony really messed it up for everybody. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I, I, just wish, I just wish when it all happened, I was really hoping that the Canon and Nikon was going to be just amazing releases because, and I did, did say that to people and I really do believe it. I, I really would love them to succeed and do really well. And I just think they haven't pushed Sony at all. And, and I'm a bit disappointed in that respect because I was really hoping to get a new A7S III, for instance. Uh, and I just think now there's no rush at all to bring anything out because they're not better or even near where Sony are currently, and that's that's the problem. Uh, so I'm just wondering now where this is going to go. You know, what what is Sony now going to do? Are they going to hold off everything uh, because of they haven't been pushed? Uh, we need the competition, and I just don't think it's happened. Speaking about holding off on that, obviously this was posted on Sony Alpha rumors that uh, there is talk about not announcing or rushing the release of the Sony A7S III based on what this information is coming out. But I don't know. I, I, I would imagine that they should be announcing it based on a certain time frame anyway. But if it looks like the competition isn't really pushing them, they can just hold off a little bit longer and not announce anything at this moment. Well, yeah, I mean, you know, people might want an A7, like the A7000. They could, if they put a lot of enough good features in the A7000, that'll put Sony back because obviously, clearly, the A7 III is the winner of this current minute. So, like, the only thing they can do is announce the A7000 to put them over the top in the APSC line. Yep. AP, yeah, APSC line. And then come WPPI next year or whatever, they can drop the A7S3. They can kind of work on it a little bit more, maybe like have the engineers figure out how to make sure. 10 bit 4K is like not cropped. Like they have time now because, like, oh, oh, I don't have to rush. I'm good. 
Yeah, it, it's. Uh, I was disappointed in that respect alone. Um, like I said, I was seriously thinking about getting the Canon until I saw there was no IBIS. There's little things that they've just left off in each camera that just, just, just I think are, are a silly <laughs> move by them. Yeah. You know, it's just silly. It's, having it's that articulating good. screen and they're not having yeah. IBIS is silly. Hey, I want I want your thoughts on this. I don't know if you caught this as well, David. Is that they did say they were going to allow you to use your EFS lenses on there. Now we can talk a little bit about the fact that they don't, they're not allowing to transfer their EFM lenses, their APS-C mirrorless lenses over on there for the time being, there's no talk on that, but it looks like you can adapt the EFS lenses, which has never been possible on their Canon full frame DSLRs. You've never been able to technically mount an EFS lens without modification. So I was actually very excited with the fact of potentially using the a the EOS R with a 10 to 18 potentially for a vlogging scenario, having that flip out screen. And, and by the way, I don't, uh, for me personally, I wasn't looking at it for te technically like a vlogging type tool, but more of a teaching tool. When I record material for my students, I like to be able to frame the shot and see myself. Maybe I'm out on the field and I have to record something or even for YouTube. And again, it's still the one biggest issue that I have with Sony not having a flip out screen for my needs. I'm not saying everybody out there needs a flip out screen, but I personally would like to have one oh, so I don't I have to bring a small HD focus. I don't have to bring an additional yeah. monitor. People don't realize that. And you, these cameras, these mirrorless cameras are more hybrid-like than they've ever been. So both photo and video catering to those two markets. Mm -hmm. And the reason why I was excited about the Canon is that Canon does that so well. Their menus yeah. work, their touch interface works, their dual pixel works really well. I can just touch the focus, tap the screen. I'm ready to go. I don't have to think about it as much. Sony, the Sony has a mechanical feel to it in the sense that you have to really understand how everything works in, in detail. But a Canon camera, people can get, they can learn it much faster and get it set up quicker. That's just, but I'm, I'm just saying that's the impression I've always gotten with Canon. And that was the reason why I've actually been interested in looking at getting an EOS M50 recently. It just... I just started thinking about it again. Now I have, I've had an e, a Canon 80D before, but the EOS M50, smaller form factor, it's like an 80D, but I'm still waiting to see what Sony does with their six, their A7000 series. And I'm hoping for a potential flip out screen. Again, my potential needs, I'm not, everyone else has their own particular needs for things, but I would love to see some sort of flip out screen. Yeah, screen. I, can, I can understand that. The, the uh, EFS though is going to have a 1.6 crop, I believe. Mm -hmm. uh, so you are going to have to take that crop into account. The the M50 is a great camera, but apart from it's crippled in 4K because that that's the problem. They've crippled the 4K in that. I don't think you can yeah. use uh, dual pixel autofocus in 4K, no. which is nuts. And, so it, and, this, and the thing, thing is, keep doing. and I personally wouldn't use it for the time being as it. It'd be kind of like a, a stopgap between what I'm doing now and 4K in the future. Because uh, I know it doesn't ha it doesn't have the 4K, and then also what's interesting too with the uh, EOS R, if you put an EFS lens, a crop lens onto the EOS R, you can't shoot in 1080p 60. So you already don't get 1080p 120, but if you want to use an APS-C lens, you're not going to be able to use uh, 1080p 60 on that particular camera with their EFS lenses. So, uh, neither neither camera either, neither manufacturer looks like they're going to do IAF. Or the Canon may, we don't know, because the M50 has it apparently, but it doesn't yeah, work very that. well. Yeah. Oh, see, see, I haven't seen that. I haven't seen the, the reviews on the, the eye autofocus, but yet yeah, you're right. The EOS M50 has the eye autofocus, but we still don't know for sure 100% if the uh, EOS R has the eye autofocus. So. Yeah, so it's 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 just interesting, you know. That I mean, I would like I said to you, I would love that flip out. I'm dying for Sony to do one, and yeah. I just don't know if they're going to give us one with a flip out screen. But there's got to be a reason why they're not giving us that ability. But you know, I mean, out of all of them, I probably would buy the Canon out of yeah. all of those cameras released due to that flip out screen <laughs> and the dual pixel autofocus for me being tracked in video. So that that probably would be the one I'd buy <coughs> if I was buying anything of these other cameras at the moment i think i think sony is i wouldn't say lazy but i think like when you think about a company and i saw um uh david and lee talking on lee's stream yesterday and he was like you know these cameras these companies are for profit so whatever they can do to make the most money they're going to do and i think when you look at sony's their bodies their bodies don't make for a flip around screen they've been using these same bodies essentially for the last five years they just kind of upgraded the bodies 
but they haven't made them big enough to actually support a fuck around screen because maybe the technology or whatever screens they have been using are the most um what is the word uh price efficient or whatever or cost effective yeah. so they the way they're building these cameras they put so much into them and they charge such a low price that they have to put some kind of cost effective products in their in their cameras um to make them because like i think about it, like panasonic all of panasonic cameras have a flip around screen uh but these cameras kind of were like made for video from the jump like they kind of had a video mindset um and even like the lower end canons have flip around screens and fuji just released the one with a flip around screen but they had to change the body like until sony decides to actually redo the body it's not going to come with a flip out screen until they re- re- you know come up with a new body style and I'm hoping yeah. that A7000 or whatever that might be is the one that starts it off. Uh, yeah. That's what I'm really hoping for. Um, and speaking of that, actually, the the post on Sony Off Rumors was confirming on potential people that already use it that it's a completely different camera, but that's all they can really say so far. So um, it looks like it's it's out in the wild already, The this new APS-C camera. I'm still hoping for the flip-out screen, but... We shall see. And we did get some donations. So here we go. Um, Steve Pritchard dropped $2, saying thanks, that one camera guy. Steve, thank you for the $2. Really appreciate it. And Alex Sandoval dropping $10, saying, what's up, you guys? Tuning in from Disneyland. Alex, what are you doing? Enjoy your time. I saw your story earlier. Just enjoy your time at Disneyland. <laughs> appreciate you. I think, you. too, um, the A7000, yeah. I think, is probably going to have a different body due to the – I would expect them to put the Z battery in that camera. Mm-hmm. So I, I think it's going to have to – I can't believe they'll bring out another uh, using the old battery. They, they have to basically up that for the uh, for the new battery. So whether – you know, it may be in the design of an A7S III, uh, but just have the APS-C um, sensor in there. We don't know, but I, I think they probably are going to have to change the grip definitely due to the fact of that that new battery. I'm hoping there's a, a flip out screen. Someone just said before that they think Canon has the patent, but that can't be true because the A99, the Sony A99 has a flip out screen. Also, they're saying there that the five, uh, what was it, the um, was it the five one hundred uh, had a A5100, flip out. Screen. Yeah, they, well, they, they, didn't, they weren't yeah. articulating out, but they flipped up. But either way, they sell, they were selfie screens for the, the most yeah. Part. But yeah, um, the, the A99 Mark II flips. W- yeah, strange. It does like this, but it's very mechanical. It just kind of creeps up there on the A ninety nine Mark II. So. They're not fully uh, articulating, though, are they? No, no. But that brings me to Panasonic because you know all mm-hmm. all Panasonic cameras have to live the G eighty five, the G seven, the G nine, the G eight five, and the G H five S all have flip out screens. Yep. So if the rumor is true about Panasonic, you know, coming into the full frame market, even if they use Sony sensors. Like that could spell big competition for Sony and and Canon in the video market yep. because Panasonic's like they you know made Micro Four Thirds kind of like the video go to sensor because of the the features that they put in their cameras. So if there's anyone that could knock Sony off of that high horse, it's uh, Panasonic. Yeah, yeah just I agree. You guys that would be a great announcement. Yeah, just to let you guys know, if you don't know already, Panasonic, and I didn't even I didn't even catch wind this until yesterday, but Panasonic is announcing, or they're proud to announce Rumors. a full frame uh, camera, September twenty fifth. That's what they're planning for. As far as whether or not they're going to use an SL mount, like the Leica, the Leica SL, or a brand new mount. So those things are in discussion right now. I was really hoping they would use a mount that already exists, so we don't have to buy another set of lenses. But um. Uh, we shall see. I, I don't know for sure. Hopefully, it's adaptable. Uh, you know, adapting lenses. Yeah, no that that would you know it's that would put people in a tough situation because you think like every camera company has something that you might want. So like yep. you know, Nikon has four two two ten bit output via HDMI. Uh, Sony has a super great low light and great autofocusing. Canon has a flip out screen and great color science. It's like we can just combine. <laughs> <laughs> You're not gonna get we that, can man. Take something from every camera, You're like not gonna man. Get that. But I'm saying, if Panasonic yeah. does that, if they, if if Panasonic basically makes a full frame GH5S, like it's it's over. Like yeah. you know, with Ibis, like it's, it's done. Like everybody's yeah, it'd be incredible video wise. Yeah. 
And I, I don't, I wouldn't, I, even the photo stuff will improve too. They're using mm -hmm. a full frame sensor. So we don't even yeah. know it could, it could scale up both photo and video, but they got the photo stuff down really well. Like Panasonic's now, got that down. Just to let so. you know too. Yes. Uh, on Saturday also, I had to play around with the new black magic 4k camera as well. Oh yeah. That, that, that one seems really nice. Too. Yeah. yeah, that screen is the best screen I've <laughs> ever seen. The screen on the back of that camera is incredible. It, it's just gorgeous. Um, that's another interesting one as well that's going to be uh, obviously released in the coming weeks. You know, I'm going to tell anyone that's wanting to buy anything, if you can wait about another, like a month to see what everyone set, drops, I would just wait a month out because everyone's like itching to get something. Um, but like Photomag um, mentioned earlier, if you need like an A7 III now, if you're looking for an A7S III later, you can still sell your A7 III uh, at not a big loss. Just think of it as a long-term rental. But um, but yeah, these companies are dropping stuff this month and, and probably early next month as well. So, all right. Um, yeah, Sony's, Sony's a little bit caught uh, because I think that I don't think they understood. Well, they probably did, but I don't think people realize how good a video camera the A7 III is. Mm -hmm. and, and that's that's the thing with that camera. It's remarkable, you know. I mean, you've got amazing low light. You've mm -hmm. got log profiles built in there. You've got the H is it HDL. You can shoot there as well for the expanding color. The focus is just insane. You've got the mm -hmm. dual card slots. They really did change the game when they released that camera, and I think it's there's probably no rush to release another video camera because you could probably use that for the next five years. Well, it's funny, like, like when you think about the general market with the price of the A7 III and the features that it provides, let's say they do release an A7S III, it's probably going to be priced along the, along the lines of the A7R III, yeah. and for most of us, the A7 III is good enough, like, yeah. quote unquote, good for most of us. So only the hardcore people are going to be interested in like the 4K 10 bit and 4K 60 uh, and super low light that the A7 S3 will provide. For most people, the A7 III is going to be perfectly more than enough. Yeah. Yeah, I, I think that's the case. The folks who are waiting on for that, cinematographers mm -hmm. and are heavy in video, definitely yeah. that's the crowd. Um, but Sony always does that one little thing, that <laughs> one little thing that's going to get you to itch to get the next camera. So, uh, yeah, that 4k 60 P is going to be, they're going to push that. I'm pretty sure pretty hard. These, if that is the case, if that's the case. And you got to remember this stuff is only getting cheaper. So like, you yeah. know, in a year or two from now, the a seven three is probably going to be like what? $1,500. So the, you think about what that camera can do for 1500 bucks. Like, yep. Yeah, they changed the marketplace. The, the The price that they offered that camera for really did change the whole game. And, and I think that's probably what's hurt the other manufacturers. You know, you've got to compete at that level for that price, and it's obviously tougher than what we all think. And this is these are APS-C prices. It's like, well, what's left for, her, you know, the A7000? Like, if it comes out and it's $1,500, it got, it's got to have a whole lot because a few hundred or more dollars, you can get a full-frame camera. And exactly, you, yeah. You know? With way more lens support, because again, we go back to APS-C, the lenses just aren't there to justify the the, the cost or the yeah. you know the investment or whatever. All right, you know um, when you guys when I was first hearing about the the lenses, when I saw the twenty eight to seventy f two, the first thing that came to mind was a twenty eight to seventy five f two from a uh, f two point eight from Tamron. And in my head, I was like thinking to myself, wow, they made a mirrorless lens. It's going to be fairly light. And then I realized, no, it's not going to be a light lens. No, it's going to be massive, I think. Yeah. On the specs, it's coming out at 1400, um, about 1,400 grams or roughly three pounds for the 20 to 70 F2. Uh, the 51.2 is obviously not going to be a small lens either at about a, a 950 grams or almost two pounds. So they are going to be heavy lenses. And... Oh yeah. my God! I'm glad I'm glad you brought this up because this is yeah. what Canon this is what Canon does and this is what they've done for the longest. Again, you guys, I'm a Nikon shooter. I go back like yeah. not that far back, not that old, but <laughs> like. And David, you probably can attest to this. Back in the day when it was Nikon versus Canon, most Canon people were like, "Oh, but Canon lenses are great," and they just always they either hung on Canon's color science, which I'd never. I was like, "It's okay." Or Canon lenses, and Canon always had that luscious fifty-one point two and the eighty-five one point two. Which I always time, wanted. 
Yeah, and every time I would shoot with somebody's cannon, one and if they if they had the eighty five, I'd go straight to one point two because I'm like, oh, I want to see what one point two looks like with Boca. So and they're doing it again, like even with this new, even at, you know whatever you want to think about the camera, that's one thing. But a twenty eight to seventy f two lens is what I've been screaming in the comments <laughs> for the longest. I said, man, yo, twenty eight f two. And people are like, oh, no, they'll, they'll never do that because it'll, it'll ruin the lens. And they did it. And it's like Canon did it again. And they're like, if they don't come through with their camera tech, they got their lenses to lean back yeah. on. But but with this whole new mirrorless thing, it opens up the world of adapt, ad, adaptation because yeah. now lenses don't have to be as exclusive as they used to be back in the day. Like If you bought Nikon, you had to buy Nikon lenses or else it's pointless. But now with you know Metabones and Sigma... If they come out with these adapters, like if I could get my Z7 with that 28 to, I don't care how stupid I look. <laughs> <laughs> I don't care how dumb I look with a Canon lens and a Nikon body. That lens would never leave my camera. I'm going to tell you oh. I, that, I, I, well, I got to do this really quick. Um, mm -hmm. Steve Pritchard just dropped $50 oh, snap. on the stream. Steve says, thanks for the Sony info. Still a newbie here, but appreciate all three got three of you guys and your knowledge, Steve. The, the so thing much. too, uh, and I, I do, I've always believed that Canon probably. I don't know whether you guys are going to agree with this, but I, I do believe that Canon probably have made the best lenses, mm -hmm. and I still think like even their seventy to two hundred two point eight is the best seventy to two hundred out there. Uh, the 85 I always wanted as a Nikon shooter. I always wanted the 85 1.2 because I think that's just an amazing, soft, beautiful portrait uh, type lens. And obviously now there's the 50 1.2 as well. That, that's something I haven't been able to get with Sony. I mean, yes, you can get an 85 1.4, but I've used that and that, that still doesn't match when I have occasionally used or tried the, 80, the Canon 85 1.2. Uh, they definitely have got uh, that up in their lenses, and that's one thing where I sort of would love to get those type of lenses in, in my system. And I always wanted it when I was a Nikon shooter as well. And then that's the thing. Like, people who, who love Canon are going to stick with Canon because of that Canon glass, and no, ne they'll never leave because of that Canon glass. But, yeah. like I said, with, with adapters, if somebody can come out with an adapter that would you know offer decent or close to decent, like how the Sigma MC11 adapter works for a lot of Sigma lenses, at least now in this third generation. If they can come up with something with that, like you're gonna see like cross cross platform of lenses because it's gonna be like film. Like, you know, oh <clears throat> it's not gonna yeah. really matter what camera system you have. It's gonna be all about what lenses you have because yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm you know, laughing at Jay Sands comments. <laughs> <laughs> oh, there, he's giving a donation of ten dollars. Thanks so much. But how much to change your name to that one card guy? <laughs> Jay, the, when I was taking the football pictures, it wasn't a big deal. It wasn't like life or death or anything like that. It was, it was okay, man. <laughs> I didn't need two cards on that sh on that shoot. <laughs> um, you know, I, I'm gonna say for me personally, I'm just gonna talk from my my own perspective on this camera coming as a uh, coming here as a Canon shooter before in the past, moving on to Sony. This is kind of like the camera I wanted to see sort of evolve from Canon when they were kind of releasing their 5D Mark IV. For me, the only, like I could live without the IBIS. I think I would have personally have been very, very interested in this camera if they had at least eight to 10 frames per second with continuous autofocus. Mm -hmm. Because since I do shoot sports, I still have. Um, yeah, it's got five, Danny, hasn't it? Yeah, it only has five. I still have this. With, it's, a, it's a Canon EF mount, it's my sports lens. I have the 70 to 200 f2 point from Canon, I have a 2470 f2.8 from Canon. And I would love to be able to try them out and use them. I still have my 1740 and ultra wide from Canon. So I still have my Canon glass, some of them still. But I was just hoping that uh, the sports aspect of it maybe have like at least eight to 10, but five, it's not a, I mean, it's not the end of the world, but I definitely do want to do a rental on it and try uh, and check out the camera. So uh, I am very interested to see how well the thing does. But that's um, the one little gripe I had personally about that, that EOS R. Okay. Well, like I said, man, like Sigma, do your thing, man. Like get yeah. that twenty-eight to seventy. <laughs> Start that petition. <laughs> Is it? Isn't that weird? You would think that the you would think that the twenty-eight to seventy was from Sigma. True. That F two. I know because like, they got the eighteen to thirty-five one point eight, and, and like 
they're only I'm like, yo, can y'all do a full frame version of something like that? Like, come on, dude, we need that. It's pretty that impressive is. because basically it's like having uh, manual uh, prime lenses with you at that focal range. Mm -hmm. I mean, having an F2 lens like that is, is would be amazing if you want to carry around the weight, obviously. But, you know, yeah, you've got wow. that whole focal range and basically it's like you've got a, a, a primes at, at that complete yeah. focal range. Yeah. That's, that's going to be a really badass lens right there. <laughs> It's, it's this is why it's too expensive, though. It's this is why like three thousand. This is why there has to be another announcement because there's no way you're going to put pay that sort of money and be mm -hmm. putting those lenses on that camera that's announced. There has to be a, a, a more high end model released soon. You know, yeah. what really what I worry about with Canon is the dynamic range. Like that's the only thing. Like 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 a lot of people. I always notice how like people who switch from Canon to Sony. Are always like so surprised about like oh that the dynamic range is so great i'm like nikon shooters have had that since forever so it's never been like a thing with me but i just i realized how surprised or how i guess i took it for granted because it's always been a thing oh that's you can't do that yeah that's always been a thing <laughs> <laughs> you didn't know you could bring the five stops and still have you yeah know, detail like that you know so i just hope that Canon can come out with a sensor that can do really good low noise um and have good dynamic range. I did a test. It's funny. I did a test with the A with the A nine versus the um, D seventy five hundred. And the, sorry, not D seventy five hundred. D seven fifty. It's on my channel. And like I, I uh, underexposed the image on on purpose just to see the di dynamic range. And like once you go past two stops, like the A nine starts to lose it, but the D seven fifty kept it all the way through. And I was just like, oh, so that's the plus in the the. Pro and the con of the A9 sensor is it's a super fast sensor, but the dynamic range kind of lacked quite a bit. But that's kind of what you get for as long as yeah, you, you have to do the test. You have to do the mm -hmm. test with the A7 III, really. You'll find mm -hmm. it's, it'll be comparable. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So. I, I noticed, too, that it was interesting because when I shifted from Nikon to Sony, I didn't have to change my shooting style at all because the sensors were basically the same and, and yeah. you know that was the beauty of moving over i didn't really have to do anything differently i still underexposed and and raised the shadows very similarly so it, it wasn't that i had to change my shooting style if i'd gone from nikon, uh, nikon to canon i would have definitely had to change my shooting style because the dynamic range just wasn't there mm -hmm. uh, and it still isn't as good as what the the you know the say the um d850 or say the a7 III is it's still nowhere near what that dynamic range is i i don't care what can and people say it's not um that they by, uh, by far uh sony and nikon have that that dynamic range at this stage you know stitched up maybe because the nikon's using sony sensors that's sort of built from that i, I don't know um but the dynamic range is just incredible creative film says uh a9 can handle more than two stars bro it's probably more it's maybe it's three i remember like i i, I took it out from like because a lot of them you can go from like zero to five and i know once i got to five this the um the Nikon was like still there, but the uh the A9 had lost it. I was like, oh, I was so surprised by that because I was like, oh, it's a nine, it's a Sony sensor. I figured Sony's sensors were in both, it should be the same. But that's when I learned every sensor is not equal, like in every camera. It also it depends to how you're shooting because if you're shooting mechanical, uh, you get much more dynamic range than if you're shooting on silent shutter on the A9. Mm-hmm. Let's see here. Uh, Andy Garcia is asking, "What's the deal with the Canon R with the five thousand autofocus points?" I don't. I don't think we know everything on that. Maybe it's maybe it's something they're going to flaunt with their autofocusing. Maybe they have a much more advanced autofocusing system, and it hasn't been shown in the PDF files that have been released. So uh, anyone's guess is good as mine, unless. David or photo me has got something. Well, someone said to put a comment on because I put a video about that yesterday talking about the specs of the that camera and someone was saying it's the way that they measure the uh, dual pixel. It, it's mm -hmm. really it's just terminology. It probably works out that it's it's probably similar to what the A7 III and the A9 are. If you read it in, in true terminology, it's somehow how they and it, I can't remember what the exact, I had a few people commenting on it actually saying that it's just really terminology. It's not really true that there's 5,000 AF points. It's probably something like uh, 700 or something like that. And we just got $5 from that guy. He's asking, which would you pick? 
between us, 4K 120 frames per second or 1080p raw or 16 plus stops of dynamic range? Um, ooh, I'd, t I'd take the dynamic range if that was me. I pick 120 because slow motion. <laughs> <laughs> you know why? You know why I say that? Because like I shoot video, I shot video, like again, I shot my vlogs on my Panasonic G85. And like that was fine enough. Like I, I, I wanted a little bit more dynamic range. But if I had to choose between better low light or better performance or 4K 120, I'd pick 4K 120 in a heartbeat just so I could shoot 4K from beginning to end. Yeah, I, yeah, I, I shoot would... mostly 1080p 60, and I I always sort of slow that down 50%, and I've found that's enough. I very rarely ever shoot in um, 1080 120. Uh, I don't need to sort of slow it down that much, but, yeah. I'm from I, I the would, Peter I McKinnon would. School of Film, so. <laughs> <laughs> 120 all day or bus. I would, I would take 4K 120. Yeah. Oh, I got to do rebuttal. Um, somebody said... Uh, Casper. Casper, he said people who shoot Nikon <laughs> shouldn't talk about Sony cameras. Dude, I shoot Sony just as much as I shoot Nikon. <laughs> Funny enough, like if you look at my channel, I have just as many Sony videos as I have as I have Nikon videos. It's just I don't ever own a Sony. So <clears throat> but I got enough friends to where if I needed a Sony, I could have one. George Via just dropped four ninety nine. Thanks for the info, guys. I'd never be where I'm at if it wasn't for everything I've learned from you guys. Manny Ortiz, next vid, I'll donate to you. We'll see about getting Manny on the next show. Right, yeah. It's been a while. <laughs> yeah. All right. Troll videos. <laughs> troll videos. Hey. There's <laughs> <laughs> nothing wrong with a bit of trolling, isn't there? Yeah. Like, hey, you know what? I know who I am, okay? And I, and I wear my badge proudly, okay? <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's too funny, man. <laughs> All right. Is there anything else you guys want to chat on, uh, mention about this camera before we jump into like the questions towards the end? No, no I think that I, covers know, about like everything. I, yeah, I, yeah, I made my point about Canon and their lenses, and <laughs> you know, I just I'm just excited for Photo Kina, man. I'm just hoping, I just hope that there's some good enough coverage, and that there's enough people who can make very good, informative videos and ask the right questions. Because man, Francis, I know Francisco's going out there. I hope Francisco does some kind of vlog or something. So, you know. But I mean, every, everything's going to be announced. I feel like everything's going to be announced before we, they even get to Photokina. So everyone's going to have their hands on it already. I'm sure there's a press conference going down in a couple of days, obviously, for the Canon stuff. Haven't heard anything about it from people. So well, well, Sony apparently down. aren't even having a press conference. So clearly they're not going to announce anything because they're, they're not having any. They've scheduled no press time at all. So yeah. I think for Sony, we're going to be in for a pretty quiet uh, show. Maybe after though, right? So we'll just have to wait till after that's all that's all done. So all right, folks, we are gonna spend another maybe five to ten minutes on Q and A. So please go ahead and drop questions for all three of us and we'll go ahead and tackle them um, for the next five to ten minutes here on the show. So let's go ahead and see what is going on. Um Thomas Roberts asked A seven three versus A seven R classic. I haven't used the A7R Classic, but um, I do remember the original A7, and I would probably stick with the A7 Mark III. That's what I would I would go with. Yep, sign. <laughs> no comment. <That's... laughs> Chris Barr dropping two dollars, saying Sony this fall is all about the new Ibo robot dog. <laughs> <laughs> I love what I uh, I'm De Brown said that um, the uh, Sony FS5 with raw upgrade, 4K 120 frames per second burst or 2K 240 frames per second continuous is amazing. His prediction is that the A7S III will have something <laughs> like this. Uh, yeah, that's a bigger camera though, man. That camera has like a probably a bigger processor and it doesn't overheat and all that stuff. You never know. Yeah. Kayo. Kayo's asking, uh, hey, guys, I'm looking to buy a 24-70 f2.8 lens. What would you guys recommend? Canon with the MC11, a Sigma Art with the MC11, the Tamron 20-75, or stay up for the Sony G Master? Well, I'd get the Tamron if that was me. I, I'd just go definitely for the Tamron 28-75. Yeah, that lens is just incredible. Yeah, I would I, personally, 
I've used the Sony G Master. I've never used the the, the, the Tamron, but I would say either get the Tamron or save up for. It. I wouldn't go adapter if you don't have to adapt. Don't like if there if the, your company makes a lens that you can buy, either save up for that lens that you can buy or get a cheaper version of it or something. But I wouldn't adapt if there's something that's available for you already. Yeah, uh, that's a good point. Yeah, if you can avoid the adapting part, don't. The 20 to 75, if you can get your hands on it, is, a, is, is good now after they did the updates and everything <laughs> with the firmware. Um, Sony G Master is still obviously going to give you the best performance in terms of compatibility at the end of the day, but the 20 to 75 is a solid choice at this point. Mm -hmm. I would say that. It's also the macro use on that lens, though, as well, is just unbelievable. Like how close you can get with that Tamron is, is amazing. So, you, you know, you almost don't need to buy a macro. All right, let's see. Langston Ball is asking, I'm a full-time software engineer looking to start doing, I guess, photography, maybe video or photography full time, part-time. I have a decent portfolio, I think, but the phone isn't ringing. I think, I, what, number one, what's the first thing I should focus on? I think you guys are probably better at this. Wait, so what's his question again? He said he's a he's what now? He's an engineer. He's mm -hmm. he's wanting to get into photography part time. He's building up a portfolio, but he's not getting phone. The phone's not ringing, right? I guess he's not finding cl clients starting calling him up. What thing that Langston sort of focuses on that you recommend? Um, I would say networking. So, kind of networking and advertising. I'm not sure. I don't know if he, he hasn't given given a lot of information on how well he's good at networking with like finding clients. Um, whether it be doing work in and, and that it's such a broad spectrum because I always my default is always into the wedding uh, and event space. And if you can get with some wedding planners or do some wedding videos or, you know, ask maybe some photographers, hey, like, do you have a wedding? If you have a client who wants video, can I like offer to do a video at your wedding, you know, as a and to get your name out there? If you can network with other photographers and say, hey, I do video. If you have any customers who want video, let them know and kind of work your way into that area i can't speak into like the commercial space because i'm i'm, I'm that's not where that's not my area of expertise i'm just more wedding and, and families and nobody's gonna no family's gonna pay for video for family photography or senior photography so that's your only choice that i can recommend is video oh sorry wedding videos yeah it's mostly look it's i always say that this job is 70 percent networking and and 30 percent photography yep. uh, the business side is incredibly important but the main thing i can say to you is you've got to keep posting and concentrate on personally i think instagram is by far the best site that you can actually post on to get work from i get far more work from instagram than i get from facebook or any other social media out there instagram really is the place now where uh, young people particularly are going, brides are going, things like that. Uh, I'm getting far more from Instagram than anything else. You should be posting every single day. And that doesn't, you can even just keep posting your similar images, just delete them off. If you haven't got enough work, <laughs> delete them off earlier and then repost again, just so you're continually getting those hits uh, on there. But like I said, you go out, try, if you can go to sites like on Facebook where you can get models and do TF, uh, TFP shoots uh, or TFT, whatever, trade for time, then post those on Instagram. But Instagram is by far the best site out there to get work from, by far. You know, you're, you're, to your point, I've seen big photography sites, or not sites, but uh, I guess uh, accounts. There's one guy I follow, like he posts these epic landscapes. And I'm like, I swear I've seen that landscape before. And I scroll back and I'm like, you know, he posted the same when he posted like six months ago. And I'm like, oh, yeah. I heard it. So people do repost things. So that's not even far-fetched. Yeah. Yeah. Just All right. face it out, you know. Eli M, q and I would like to sell my A6000 and get the A7 III soon. What lens should I get? The 20 to 75 or the 24 to 105 for landscapes? I'm going to keep my RX10 Mark IV for wildlife. Uh, I'm not a big landscape photographer but i would say the 24 105 on my yeah. end what would you guys recommend yeah I'd the same lens yeah mm -hmm. when i, I when i for, yeah go ahead when i did my test i found if you're if you care about the sharpness of the overall sharpness across the range on the lens the 24 105 was definitely sharper across the range um on that lens compared to the 20 to 75 it's also yeah, the zoom too a, a lot of uh, landscape photographers uh or people learning landscape at the beginning are always shooting everything wide. And, th and that's not the way often you should be shooting landscapes. Often having compression can be a great thing, you know, to bring that mm -hmm. mountain sort of in by using that compression. So if you're dealing with a 105, at least you have some of the compression 
uh, there. That's why I love the 18 to 105 on the APS-C camera. It's the same thing. You can use that compression to make something look really interesting instead of everything being so wide and everything so tiny. Um, yeah. Yeah. All right, here's uh, Steve Holt. Um, does the EOSR have an SDH2, SDHC or UHS2 card slot? It seemed to support it. Um, I, I there were some there were some specs on the actual PDF um, that sort of illustrated that you would get better performance with the UHS2, but maybe I, I misread that. David, do you did you catch that? Yeah, I saw that too because I was originally looking at that as well, thinking, oh, it's only UHS-1 too, but they definitely say later on that it had that US UHS-2 compatibility, so I think it will. Yeah. Uh, Jim Penn, following up an SD card story, once I was on a two-engine prop aircraft forced to land in Hong Kong, digital cameras didn't exist yet, landed safely, met fun ladies, left Hong Kong six <laughs> days later. <laughs> uh... <laughs> oh man all right Remy reams qa a73 versus a7r3 i want to upgrade missing the detail from my d810 is the video autofocus as good as the a7 mark three uh no the a7 mark three is better it's definitely better in in autofocus video than what the a73 r3 uh, is i mean i would it just depends what you need it for i would say they're adequate like the A7R3, this is just my, my opinion on it, but the A7R3 I think is adequate, uh, but obviously if you want that detail and you want the 42 megapixels, you're going to have to go to the A7R3. So, Yeah. It's also right. noise, though, too. Remember that the, the noise is better on the A7 III for video than what it is on the A7R3 as well. Mm -hmm. You have to shoot in crop mode, though, um, if you want yes, to get a little bit do. of performance back. Yeah, the A9 yeah. you don't. The A9 is the only one where it's there's no penalty between Super 35 and full frame. Uh, L. Duderino is asking, will Canon announce Tamron announce a 20 to 75 for Nikon and Canon? Who knows? I don't know yet. They probably won't because they have the 24 to 70. Like that's their lens on on that's their lens for Canon and Nikon to compete with Nikon 24 to 70. And uh, I think, like you guys mentioned, the, the 28 to 75 on Sony is supposed to be a lighter lens, so it's probably a bit smaller than their counterparts for Nikon and Canon. So I doubt they'll, I doubt they'll release the same lens twice. They might release one for the mirrorless, like a, a mirrorless version, Z mount, but part not not F mount or um, with Canon's EF mount. <clears throat> Let's see here. Uh, D Max asking, how much weight have you lost? He's asking me. Last time I said 31 pounds or something like that. I think something like that. I don't know, man. <laughs> Let's see. Uh, I'm about to actually, I should uh, make this a slow, low key announcement. Uh, the local Tacoma, that some in Tacoma, Washington, and the Tacoma School of Arts needs a substitute teacher. So I'm going to be a substitute teacher for the next couple months. So. Hey, Ooh. Professor Photo Me Yike down. I'm, <laughs> I'm gonna make all my students subscribe to my channel for extra credit. So <laughs> it's funny, oh, people man. ask me, it's like, Danny, do you make your students subscribe for extra credit? I'm like, no, <laughs> yeah, I will. <laughs> Numbers go up, <laughs> oh, dude. I'm like, like all my videos, please. Thank you, right? Yeah. <laughs> Uh, let's see here. They're saying we skipped Steve's question. What was Steve's question? Sorry. Uh... I can't find it. Yeah. Repost it, uh, repost it down if you can. Let's see. Uh... How do you... Oh, Chris Dye is asking, how do you post on Instagram to get paying clients? No, oh, I don't. I don't get paying clients. Uh, I mean, I'm just posting on Instagram to uh, just sort of share my work. And like I said, it's it's an area where I'm always getting um, companies offering me. But like uh, that's where I get most of my brides contacting me, or the models that contact me through Instagram. It used to be Facebook. Facebook used to be the the site that I used to get nearly all my work, and now probably eighty percent of it comes through Instagram. It's amazing how much it's changed. You've got to remember too that. Kids aren't really using Facebook anymore. And I mean, when I'm saying kids, it's also young women as well mm -hmm. are tending to move right away from that because their parents are on there and they don't want to be anywhere where their parents are. So they're all moving.
moving to things like Snapchat and Instagram. So you've got to constantly look at where I always ask the girls that I'm photographing, do you use Facebook? Where do you post all of your work? And they're all using Instagram. Nearly all of them are all using Instagram. So you've got to try and target that market. There's no point putting stuff on Facebook if if you're not going to get any work from there and no one's really using it for that. And that's why, in, you know, always ask your clients, what, what are they sharing on? And you'll find it'll be Snapchat or uh, Instagram. Yeah, I, I ask it. I ask it all the time. I ask my students, "What social media are you guys using right now?" Just to keep up to date. But yeah. And uh, David, are you using like are you using the hashtags and stuff in your posts, or are you just yes, kind of yeah? I use um. What is it? I'll tell you exactly because it's the best program, and it gives you your your tags actually automatically. Um, I use Focal Mark. I don't know whether you're going to be able to see it. Oh, you can't. So it's called Focal. So it's F-O-C-A-L-M-A-R-K. Now it's on iPhone, but that gives you the tags. Mm. So it, it looks for popular tags for that day, and then I just copy them and paste them into uh, Instagram. So the, the tags are very important, and that's great. You put in your camera model. You put in uh, what whether it's weddings, whether it's a portrait, whether it's street photography, because it, it asks you in list what you want to put in. And um, then it will give you a tag. It also gives you, you're probably not going to be able to see it, but it also gives you location as well. So you can put the location where you're actually shooting. You mm -hmm. hit generate and then it will come up with a, a stack of tags. And then you can sort of just copy those and paste them in. And it, it works fantastic. And that's, yeah, that's just called uh, focal mark. Yeah, and I would say like to add to that, you know, Depending on like your who you're looking for, and who you're marketing to. Of course, if you if you're trying to be an official business, you want to have a business account, um, or at least something like dedicated to your business. So you're posting a lot of the same photos, so people kind of know what you're doing. It's like, okay, this guy posts a lot of wedding photos. He obviously does weddings. I should reach out to him and check on his wedding prices. Or, or if you have some kind of like in your main profile, some kind of thing that points to like how the people can contact you so that they can pay you. Yeah. All right, we just got a $5 super chat from that guy He's saying, shooting with the Sony a7 III, is it better to shoot 1080p 120 FPS HFR or 1080p 120p and slow down on post? Uh, this question came up with me and Jason and a Sony rep or Sony tech. They said shooting without don't uh, shooting in the 1080p 120 FPS and slowing it down after the fact gave you better quality. So that's yeah, a loss in quality. Sony. Yeah, yeah, S and Q, there is definitely a loss of quality. I, I never use it because you can actually see it. There is quite a penalty hit. Uh, so I do the same thing. I will shoot 1080, 120, and then slow in post. Hey, guys, just really quick, uh, why don't you know, if you haven't done so already, please drop a like on the video. It helps the metrics on here as well. And I do have links for uh, David and Photo Me. I like to check them out. I do recommend that they plug themselves in the chat as well. So make sure you check their accounts if you haven't done so already so if you guys can get a chance to um check the description later if you can uh, show them some love all right any other questions you guys see there by any chance of sticking out to you let's see steve saying do i have to pay another 50 dollars to get an answer <laughs> <laughs> uh where's the question uh steve i'm trying to i'm trying to track it down Somebody Winfield says, are cinema kill cameras overkill for weddings? Uh, you know, that's interesting. The last wedding I shot, well, not the last one, but a few weddings back, I shot a wedding and I, I had a, a, it was like a Russian couple and they had like two Canon C200s. And I'm like, man, like that's a, that's a beefy camera for a wedding. But I think it, it just kind of depends because again, it goes back to Sony. Like they were, were Canon shooters. So I'm guessing like for them, for what they need, they had to get a C100 or a C200 whatever to get the best performance. But the way Sony is treating these cameras, they're putting a lot of cinema grade, I guess, picture quality um, in these smaller cameras. So, I mean, I guess it depends on, like, if you rely on zebras, if you don't trust manual focus, if you autofocus, um, if you need the log profiles. I, I can't really say because I'm not a big video guy. So, uh, it just depends because I... I toy with the fact that man if i had all the money in the world would i use a c200 or a red camera like mkb for my for my youtube <laughs> videos like is that really necessary for youtube like really like it's it's really necessary 
<laughs> and it's like, it's probably not, but man, wouldn't it be cool to say I shoot my videos on a C200? Because. Are you saying I'm, for the YouTube aspect, uh, Photo Miak, or more for like the wedding stuff, right? Are you saying. Well, I'm just saying in general, like, you know, for what I can do on. For, for what the A7 or what I would use the C200 for, I'd probably get the same amount of performance out of a, something like an yeah. A7 III. And you think about, like, you have to think about how you shoot weddings because. I used to second shoot weddings with another photographer, and he shot 5D Mark IIs. And I would, he'd have me shoot with a 5D Mark II um, on a monopod, and he had a, what's the, the steady cam Merlin that goes yeah. on? He looked like RoboCop or whatever, <laughs> or Elysium. <laughs> and like, that was his stabilizer. That was before gimbals were a thing. And so he would shoot on that, and I would shoot on the monopod. And we, the videos looked just fine. And these are 5D Mark IIs. Uh, so you know, technology has gotten better. So I don't, I don't think cinema cameras are needed. But it doesn't, if you can afford it, you know, why not? What I've See, heard about the cinema. You're, you're, I was going to say as well, you're, you're being minimalistic, so you're not standing out too much and being intimidating to a bride. Mm -hmm. You know, like that. The, the smaller and the less amount of gear you have, the more natural and more journalistic you can get your shots because they're not aware really that you. are you know, you've got this massive camera that's in front of them with this massive lens and they can get nervous. And if you can blend in in the background and not be really seen, you, I think you get a much better result. Well, I know I do when I'm doing fusion and weddings. It's much better having a lot of this smaller gear. Yeah, I agree. I agree with David on that. Like, you know, smaller gear is better if it can do what you need it to do. The thing with, um, as far as talking about the YouTube aspect, the reason why those other YouTube creators are using like the C200s and the high-end cameras, they're really just flexing the cameras for sponsors. So when you're using the higher-end equipment, uh, if you're like doing tech YouTube or that kind of category, you can actually show these um, the sponsors and these companies and say, hey, look, we're working with professional equipment and these are the results that we're getting out of it. And so it just looks nice for them to be able to flex that they're able to use that equipment and gear. So that's the reason why they use to use they use that in the first place it's more on that you know flexing what, though? aspect um, i will say i never really noticed i i really you know was like the only person who i've seen where i noticed a difference is mkbhd i don't know if you guys watch his videos but i remember he did a video with uh, i justine and yeah. they both were in the same location and they both like filmed the same videos and on her channel she shoots she shoots with sony gear and, and he shoots with red uh epics or whatever and like i watched his video and then I watched her video. And even though her video is in 4K and everything is just as good, it looked like I was watching it like uh, a video shot in like 2007. <laughs> a video like that. The, the difference in quality from uh, Marquise's video to I Justine, it was crazy. I was like, wow, they were in the yeah. same spot. And like, I was like, is it? Then I was like, oh, so maybe, maybe uh, Red is worth it for that, you know, aspect alone because his quality is just, it's crazy. It's it's that flexing, man. It's, it's insane. That flexing. Yeah. Oh, okay. First Steve's of all, just Steve just dropped a message, massive uh, donation. Steve just dropped another 50 bucks. I did find the previous message, so we're going to go ahead and tackle it right now. All right, so Steve's saying, I'm just learning about – this was posted some time ago. He, uh, he says, I'm just learning about lenses. Thanks, guys. I have an Alpha 6300 <laughs> and an A7R3 with a 7200 F4 and a Zeiss 55 1.8 and four other lenses, what else do I need? But what is this four other lenses? That could be the uh, interesting yeah. thing. I, um, I, I can tell you which ones I use as my favorite lenses, Stephen, and I've got similar ones to you there in respect. I've got the 70 to 200 F4, which I love. My other main two lenses that I do 90% of my weddings are with the 85 uh, 1.8. That's the baddest, but it could be the same as the Sony 85 1.8. And I also adore the uh, 35 Sony 1.4. Um, they're the two lenses that I could probably shoot all my weddings with. So I'm not sure whether you have uh, the 35 uh, 1.4 there and even the 85. I've also got the 55 1.8, which I love as well. I use that for mostly for video. Um, but, you know, 90% of the time I'm using the 85 on, on one camera. Uh, the baddest, and I've got the 35 on the second camera that I'm shooting weddings, and I can do probably 80 to 90 percent of my weddings just with those alone. And occasionally, I'll have the 16 to 35 f4 to get a wide angle image. Um, if I have to go wider than that, I use the 10 to 18, which yep. is the uh, APS C lens that you can use from 12 to 16 on full frame. Um, apart from that, it 
you know, that that's really, and obviously then you could go into flashes and things if you wanted to go into strobes and stuff like that. But yeah, that's, well, that's my answer where the other guys would want to throw in something else there. Um, Go ahead, Photo Miak. No, what like what lens is it in? Because I kind of forgot. I was still. He has a he has an AP he has an APS-C camera, right? Uh -huh. He has an A six C three hundred and an A seven R three, which are very different in the sense that, uh, you know, crop sensor full frame. But he has mm -hmm. a full frame seventy to two hundred f four, a okay. Zeiss fifty five one point eight. Okay. So he's got a fifty, and then four other lenses. The problem is, I'm not sure what those four other lenses were. He doesn't hit. Yeah. Any. Yeah. What are those four other lenses? I tend to go to full frame. If you're dealing with now that he's moved over to full frame, I probably would just buy full frame lenses and use the full frame lenses on the A6300 just because you can, you're then covered for both uh, things. Otherwise, you're going to have to go into Super 35 mode on your full frame cameras. So seeing he's already got the A7R3, I probably would tend to, if he needed any other lenses, get full frame lenses. I do adore the 24 1.8, which is what I'm using here. I love that on uh, the A6500 because it gives me that 35 mil focal length, uh, and I adore that. So if you did want a, a great lens for the for that, I'd say the the 24 1.8 is an amazing lens. Also, the 10 to 18 is a great wide angle if you want that for super 30 yeah. uh, for the A6500, and the 18 to 105 too is a great overall lens if you want a good video lens. Uh, that has a, a really wide uh, range as well. The 18 to 105 on the A6500 works well uh, as well. All right. Yeah, for me, it would depend on those other lenses. But um, DMAC, I just saw DMAC say, if you could only use one lens for a wedding, what would it be? DMAC, to answer your question, if I could only choose one prime, it would be a 35 millimeter. But if I had to choose a zoom, it'd be a 20, 24 to 70, 2.8. Yeah. If I only had one yeah. lens, it'd be 24, 70, 2.8. Or that 20 to 70 well. F2. Yeah, or that 28 to 70 F2. <laughs> uh, now that that's an option, that's the only <laughs> It's an option now. It exists, okay? It's oh, a possibility God. now. So it's, that, it's, there's no going back. <laughs> that's one stop right there, man. That's crazy. Are it's you kidding crazy. me? Oh, shoot. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Let's see here. Any other questions? If not, we're going to close up in a few here. Let's see. Uh, Warren Dubow is asking top three prime lenses for wedding photography. What would be so? If you had three, what would you pick? Thirty-five, fifty, eighty-five. Okay. David, or, what or three I primes? Would, oh, sorry, I would swap out the eighty-five for the one hundred and five. Either or, mm. those two can those two can swap, but thirty-five and fifty, or or I would swap out the thirty-five for the twenty-eight. But fifty has to stay. Fifty, there is no replacement for that fifty left range. 2835 can swap and 105 and 85 can swap. What three lenses would I use? Did you say? Prime, what's your three your three prime lenses you would pick for wedding photography? Your go uh, um, 35, 35 1.4, uh, and the 85 1.8, and then the 55. I, I could shoot with that all day. Mm -hmm. So they'd be the three lenses that I I'd use, and I do use those for nearly all my uh, weddings and and things i very rarely put zoom lenses on it's nearly always shooting primes yeah all right here jeffrey charlotte's asking do you think there'll be another offering of canon's mirrorless uh we don't know yet we'll find out on the 5th of september what everything they're gonna let us know about uh let's see here i think that's that's gonna do it for us all right it's lunch for me. Gonna have something <laughs> amazing for lunch. You guys are just about to go to bed. I'm just about yeah. to have lunch. My whole my whole family's <laughs> at the pool right now. I, you probably can't see. You guys probably can't see the view, but this is like me open the door. I'm still at the hotel. This is what it looks like out here. But yeah, so nice. Oh yeah, I can see the pool. Oh yeah, you can yeah, yeah. <clears throat> yeah. All right. Um, guys, thank you so much for joining us this evening. Don't forget to drop a like, show some love to David and also photo me Ike's channels. Is there anything we're expecting from you guys in the next, um, in this coming week, as far as any projects or video projects, David, you start first. Um, no, just a, I'll probably post a couple of things. Uh, obviously, when these announcements come out, I'll be posting about those. Obviously, <laughs> yeah, David, uh, David, I swear to God, David, you're like the angry photographer with these news, but you're like, 
Hello, it's another post. David, this yeah, is I've David. been posting like crazy. Oh hey, hold on a second. This is this is David. Hi guys, I just want to pop up here and uh, have a talk about the brand new Sony. You now it looks like they're gonna come out with a new lens, and I don't know. I just this is like yeah. David's it's quite like... funny. I, I was talking to Danny about this early on. It, see, now is my I'm in between now. If the wedding season starts for me again, the end of this month actually it starts. So I start mm -hmm. to pick up with weddings where you guys will start to turn off and I'm, I'm so at yeah, the moment, yeah. this is my quiet yeah. period. So I have been posting nearly every day and I've been loving all these things and the interaction of getting or playing around with the trolls. It's been, it's been an absolute <laughs> yeah. ball. Um, but yeah, I'll probably will post a couple more obviously this week. And I want to talk about the Fuji too, when that comes out. And then uh, obviously I have my live show on Friday uh, as well. My time it's Thursday, your time in the U S uh, I have that once a week as well. Um, so, yeah, just posting with you guys, having a chat. Like I said, it's like sitting around with a bunch of mates. So I love it. <laughs> you know, and I, it, the, to be honest with you, like I, I kind of want to do more videos like that. I don't do very many like talking heads where I just talk about gear and stuff or talk about talk about. Well, that must have been interesting. Here, so, <laughs> oh, so it's only. Repeat Sony? that. Bro. Yeah, repeat oh, that. On. Yeah, repeat that, Ike. Okay, I was saying that um, for the longest time, like, I never really did talking head videos or about gear because there was always Sony announcements and, like, I, you know, I wasn't that keen on the Sony stuff. But now with Panasonic and Canon and it's just an exciting time for gear, I want to do more videos where, I, like, I give my opinions on, like, the industry and, like, techniques and what people can do with gear and stuff like that because... I see everybody else posting videos talking about gear. I'm like, man, all these people making these <laughs> videos and talking about, and I'm like, I want to give my opinions because I'm like, I kind of agree with him, but I disagree with that point. But then that makes sense, but not that one. So I, you know, but um, so I might try to do more gear videos uh, in the future and just talking about stuff like that. And my opinions on the industry and the market and what cameras are good for what. But uh, my local camera company, guys, this is my schedule. For I leave today is Monday, right? Today's mm -hmm. Monday. I get back home Wednesday. So I get home Wednesday at seven o'clock. Thursday, I start my teaching job. <laughs> so <laughs> I'm a substitute teacher from nine to like three. That's on a card up. Then after that, I have a high school, I have a senior session. So I'm shooting senior boy after that. But then my local camera store is having a, a first look at the Nikon Z. Oh. So hands on. So I can't miss that. So I, I go home. Shoot a high school senior, then I'm head up to Seattle to test out the Nikon Z and make that video. So that'll probably oh, be my shoot. very next video because I want to get that out as soon as possible. Yeah. And then in the midst of all that, Photo Keen is happening. So, oh, that's going to be, I'll have videos twice a day yeah. for Photo Keen. <laughs> 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 Yeah. Uh, I'm out of control. Uh, I can do whatever I like. I love it. <laughs> right. Yeah. 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 I'm like, damn, another one, David. Hey, I know. Dave, Dave's going to go live right after this show, guys. Just hang tight. Uh, not, not today. I've got to go and get lunch. I might post the video later. Like, shit. <laughs> oh, my God. All right. But yeah. Okay. And then, really quickly on my end, I'm going to be testing out the 135 F1, well, 1 1.8 Sigma FE. Uh, I usually just do sports stuff, so I'll test the autofocus out a little bit more on this. I know someone was asking about that, but hopefully I can work out a review tomorrow. But that's going to do it for us this evening for Don't Monday Live. Don't forget Labels. to the uh, Sony party. <laughs> oh, Lord, this guy. Don't forget the Sony party's going on. So. Champagne hat. <laughs> RIP <laughs> in your headphones. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if we would have been able to do that with Jason on the show. Uh, I don't know. <laughs> All right. I'll never be on a, never be on again now. That'll be it. <laughs> All right, everybody. Thank you so much for joining us. Don't forget to drop a like. Check out these other two. They're very exciting. And as you heard, David's going to release a video every day. Um, so that's going to do it. Peace. All right, folks. Catch you guys.